Hello everybody, welcome to what is a special episode. We're going to talk about Rekabox 6.7, specifically track separation or stems, and the DDJ XP2 to MIDI map the control onto that. This is going to be as quick as I can. We're going to have a quick look at what stems are, how they work, how you can MIDI map them. We're going to get on with it. I'm going to do a full kind of look at Rekabox 6.7 in a different video. This is just a nice little tutorial. How can you MIDI map it to your XP2? Let's go. So, we're going to start with a little example about what stems are. Now, if you've used Serato, you've used Virtual DJ, I think even Traktor, um, you know what stems are or track separation is. Rekabox has finally, finally caught up and got it implemented. As with most of them, you can separate out your drums, your vocal and your instrumental. Now, I've got two really, really, really rough tracks here that I've thrown together as demo tracks just for this video because, you know, copyright. So I'm going to quickly show you what one of them sounds like on its own. It sounds a little bit like, let's make sure it's loud enough for you to hear, sounds a little bit like this. One more time, want you to hold me tight. got a bass, we've got a vocal, we've got some instrumentals. Nice and simple for me to demonstrate this with for you guys. So that's what it sounds like normally. Now I've mini mapped it onto my XP2 and if you can see on the other camera which I'll hopefully switch to you'll see it's mini mapped to these three buttons here. Boom boom boom. Now Rekabox have even said that this isn't perfect. Um, they have done this so it's not the balance of some of them are really, really strong in terms of how well they pull it out. This isn't the world's best, but they've done this to balance power and processing over, you know, real life performance and the fact that not everyone has a brand new laptop. So let's take a little look at it. We'll drop everything off first. Everything off. Can't hear anything. That's a good start. We'll put the vocal back in. That's not too bad, to be fair. Um, you've got to consider as well that this is quite a basic song. It's only got a few bits of drums, a vocal and some melody in there. It's not a really complex arrangement, so it should be not too bad at doing it. Now, if we had just the drums, see how you can hear the slight vocal notes in that? You can just hear that kind of pitchy bit at the top. We can hear it there. Just the instrumental, we hear that nice fat bass line. We just hear that kind of in the background there. Drums. Drums instrumental. I want you, I Vocal want you instrumental. One more time. One more time, want you I mean, that's where it sounds quite near the best. Cause I'm sick of all these lonely nights. Vocal and bass. So as you can see, it works really, really cleanly. It's not the best, but it works definitely well enough and I'm really, really happy with the performance of it. We've got another track over here, which has got everything in place at the moment. When it gets to it, we've got to go again. As you can hear, all the elements are there. Now again, demonstration, no vocals. It sounds kind of ghosty in the middle. If I put the vocals back in, and again we're going to skip through some of it, vocal only, vocal instrumental, just the drums. Now that allows us to do some stuff with like, just for example I've just got the, um, the vocal on this one. So, apparently I've not made my loop correct on uh, Logic because that's a bit out of time when it looped back round. 
but you get the idea. It allows us to perform these functions as you'd expect for removing elements of the track. And as you can see in this camera here, it's nicely mapped to my performance mode pads here. We're gonna jump into that now. We're gonna talk about that and take a little look at how I've done it. You've seen a little demonstration of that it does work. What is in the record box track, track separation to summarize. Again, we've just got bass or drum, should I say, instrumental and vocal, which we can take out on off and so on and so forth and independently isolate each component of that depending on what we want to achieve. Now, let's jump into record box, take a look at how I've done it and we can go from there. So I'm gonna go through this twice, okay? Once on the little GoPro here and once, hopefully, <laughs> screen recording my laptop. Now, the reason I wanna do both is so that I can show you what I'm talking about with the pads and the pads here, so that you get an actual idea of what it looks like between the two. Then we'll go into so you can clearly see what we're doing within Rekordbox. Now, in Rekordbox, if I go into the pad selection, it gives me this nice little screen here, which you may or may not be able to see in this video, I don't know. So in here, it gives us the option, I mapped it to pad number four, which is pad mode four. Sampler used to be there and I used to have pad effects two on that one there. Now I never used pad effects two because I didn't like it. Um, and I never really used the sampler. So I put that on shift two where it'll go to my sampler. And I've left my kind of, you know, modified mode on pad mode four. So what I've done is I've mapped multiple things about how I want them, hot cues, um, end effects, beat jumps, you know, transfer slip rolls, and then most importantly, transport vocals and all that sort of stuff. Now, as you can see, if I get out of that, I've mapped the drums to number one here, which you can hopefully kind of see. So I've mapped drums to one, and when it gets pressed, it takes it out as well, so it doesn't highlight it in the color, which is exactly what I want, because I've seen complaints of people that are doing this in Serato, where it doesn't map the color and the actual led light correctly doing it like this it is going to do that correctly for you guys so that's fantastic so you can do it by pressing the midi well you can't technically because it will ask you to do it and then it will give you the option but it won't learn the midi command because it's already being used so we don't want to do it this way um, we don't use the midi setting there but that's that one guys so as you can see at the moment we've got all of them there and if i press my buttons on my midi pad there you go, and hopefully you can kind of see, bish, bash, bosh, bish, bash, bosh, and they're there. So that's that, guys, and we'll go into it in a bit more detail in Box now. Hello, everyone. So you join me in Box Now, I have just updated this to 6.7, so we are doing this from scratch together. So first, we're going to go ahead and enable um, track separational stems. So if we go into the settings icon, into preferences and extensions, track separation and enable the track separation function. It will do this. It took a bit of time on the first go for me. Um, so we'll give it a second to do this. Um, once it's done, it's kind of done. And then, you know, nothing major needs to be completed after this. It will load come up with the track separation engine part, but it doesn't take this significant time like it's doing now. So that looks like it's done. And uh, we can see we've got little waveforms there and our little mute buttons there. So if I just pick a little track and pop it there. And here we go. So as we can see, we've got our track here loaded. Now I've got my XP2 connected. So there are two ways you can do this. Um, and realistically, this is the best way I've found to do it. Many people are saying you can do this within the MIDI mapping here and go into deck and map it on the XP2 like this, um, or on a pad or so on and so forth. But as we can see, you know, we've got, got details here, got stuff mapped and so on and so forth in here. I found a bit of a problem doing that. It didn't work the way I wanted it to do so. So if we look at my current mapping, for example, I've got my pad effects here mapped. We're gonna go into the pad settings, which close open the pad editor when it's connected over here. 
Now, as you can see, currently I've got it set up with hot cues, pad effects, beat jump, sampler, keyboard, etc., etc. I never use pad effects too. I'm probably going to start at some point using a sampler. So I'm going to pop my sampler here and jump into the sampler which was here and put this as user one. So this will now allow me to create whatever it is that I want to do. I'm going to replicate this as I've got on my MacBook Air, but that's for me to do and not for you guys to worry about. But just as an FYI, for example, I've got my hot cues here. These ones, I would want my pad effects. And then you see how I've got the option to use pad effects that I've already got in place. So I can select options that I've already got which are based off pad effects one. So it means that I don't have to do multiple mappings. I can just go ahead and select whatever it is that I want from these other options, like so. Now I'm mapping these bottom left three on pad mode four to be um, the stems. So <laughs> I've got the word there. So if I go down into this, click the, the arrows, hit transport, track separation, and then select the ones you want. For me, it goes drums, vocal, in instrumental. I don't know why it does it this way around. It annoys me. I'm guessing it's just the position of the, the menu. But we're going to hit drums first because that's the order it is. We're going to go into transport, track separation, vocals, dots, transport, track separation, instrumental. That will then assign it to that. Now, if I click it over to my XP2, and I press the pad, you can see my mouse is nowhere near it. I press it, drums have gone, drums are back. Vocals, vocals, instrumental, instrumental. And that is as simple as it is to do it. Again, we go into pad, this will do side one, would need to do a sign two and do the same thing over here. For me, that means changing it to a sampler and then changing this to be um, user one. Unfortunately, it doesn't do it because it's independent, but we will then just set it up again. So I go in the three dots, transport, track separation, and so on and so forth. And it is really, 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 really is that simple to do. Um, you need to make sure you close it. I found some weird oddities as you've just seen here. If I open it up and it hasn't quite got it saved. So I found I had to make my changes because for example, now if I do it, it's not, it's not got it. So I found I had to make my changes, transport track separation, drums, close it down, and then close record box as well for it to save this pad, pad change that I made. So do note that, that I found I had to close record box once it was done for it to actually save. But yeah, it's as simple as that to get your track separation mapped into your XP2. Have fun with it, guys. Good luck. Enjoy. Let us know how you get on. Bye-bye.